The symmetric group S sub n is a group of permutations on a set with n elements. A permutation is just a rearrangement of the set. In this notation, the S stands for symmetric, and the n tells you the size of the set being permuted. There are n factorial ways to permute a set with n elements, so S sub n is a finite group with n factorial elements. Let's see some examples. S3 is a group of permutations on a set with three elements. While you can use any set, to keep things simple, we'll use the integers 1, 2, and 3. There are three factorial ways to permute this set. These six permutations are the elements of the group S3. But what is the operation? How do you combine two permutations? Consider the permutation 2, 3, 1. This permutation takes 1, 2, 3 and replaces it with 2, 3, 1. 1 is replaced with 2, 2 is replaced with 3, and 3 is replaced with 1. When viewed this way, we see that a permutation acts like a function. More specifically, it is a bijection from the set 1, 2, 3 to itself with f of 1 equals 2, f of 2 equals 3, and f of 3 equals 1. Treating the permutations as functions allows us to define the group operation. Multiplication in S3 is just function composition. For example, to multiply the permutations 2, 3, 1 and 3, 1, 2, we start by writing these permutations as bijections f and g. Next, we compose f and g. This gives us the bijection sending 1 to 1, 2 to 2, and 3 to 3. This is the trivial permutation and it is the identity element in the group S3. S4 is a group of permutations on a set with four elements. For simplicity, we'll use the set 1, 2, 3, and 4. This group has four factorial elements. The size of a group is also called the order and is written using the absolute value symbol. So the order of S4 is 24. Be careful to not confuse this with the order of an element. The order of an element looks the same, but means something different. To learn more about the order of an element, click right over there. Next, let's introduce a more compact way to represent permutations. As an example, we'll multiply the two permutations 1, 3, 4, 2, and 4, 3, 2, 1. Earlier, we wrote these as functions. But all we really need to know is what the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 map to. The function notation just gets in the way. So we can write the permutations like this. The top row is the inputs, the elements of the set, and the bottom row is the outputs, the values each number is mapped to. This is a time-saving notation. There are other ways to represent permutations, which we'll talk about in a different video. Let's practice using this compact notation by multiplying the permutations 1, 3, 4, 2, and 4, 3, 2, 1. Remember, you apply the permutations from right to left, just like composing functions. On the right, 1 maps to 4, and on the left, 4 maps to 2. So the result is 1 maps to 2. Next, we see 2 maps to 3, and 3 maps to 4. So 2 maps to 4. 3 maps to 2, and 2 maps to 3. So 3 maps to 3. And finally, 4 maps to 1, and 1 maps to 1. So 4 maps to 1. The result is a permutation 2, 4, 3, 1. Now look what happens if we multiply them in the reverse order. 4, 3, 2, 1 times 1, 3, 4, 2. Here, the result is 4, 2, 1, 3. Notice that we get a different permutation when we switch order. The group S4 is not commutative. It is a non-abelian group. In fact, aside from the groups S1 and S2, all symmetric groups are non-abelian. To summarize what we've learned about symmetric groups, we won't use specific examples. Instead, we'll describe them generally. The symmetric group Sn is the group of permutations on a set with n elements. It is standard to use a set of integers 1 through n. The elements of the group are not the numbers 1 through n, but rather the permutations of the set. There are n factorial ways to rearrange this set of integers, so the group Sn is a finite group with n factorial elements. The order of Sn is n factorial, and if you think of a permutation as a bijection from the set to itself, then the group operation is function composition. While you can write a permutation as a function, it's easier to write simply the inputs and outputs. You may be asking yourself, 
What good will this do me? How can symmetric groups help my life? Symmetric groups are useful for writing software to study groups. This field is called computational algebra. Another reason symmetric groups are important is that every finite group, I repeat, every finite group is a subgroup of a symmetric group. This result is known as Cayley's theorem.